Ladies and gentlemen, people of planet Earth, I am here before you to stand behind you to let you witness the upcoming episode which will feature a science fiction deluxe compilation of film that shall be reviewed by these mere subhumans. But first, I have one other thing to say. All of you people out there, you best stand back. You best stand afraid. Because I will be coming for you. This finger. I shall probe you to your eyeballs. Antibodies shall be submerged within your human bodies. You shall all be mine. And with that, I thank you. And now, I present these two gentlemen to do their show. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen. We're back. We're back. Another fun-filled episode, sir. Uh-huh. Official handshake. Official handshake. Yes, indeed. All right. We should come up with our own handshake. We should? Like a little mixture of a couple of different types of handshakes oh, right. in, in one. Uh, we we'll could do like a penis shake or something. Uh, let's no, not I'm go kidding. that far. I, let's not go that far. You can that's, do that on your own time. That's below the belt, if I may say. <laughs> it is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's, it's so good to be back. You know, we weren't here last week. We yes. were preempted by another show, which, which is fine. heartbreaking for us. Because it just we, gives this week's show we, that much more we grandeur. We prepared a full show, but of course, the powers that be just kind of, you know, they cast us into the wind sometimes. Sometimes when, when the wind doth blow, we doth go. We are back. It's always a pleasure. It's an honor. It's a privilege, of course. It is. All yours, sir. Thank you. For us to be here. So once again, we just want to say hello, and we bid you all a pleasantry of the very We're happy to be back. To discuss cinema with all we of you are people. Indeed, that's right. Movie, cinema, yeah. picture show. That's that's why the we do this. The big screen, the big rectangle. Uh, you know, hopefully we're going to be. Or the small uh, rectangle for watching it on our phone. You there know? you go. Sometimes we Sometimes must watch we it on our it. phone. It's in, indeed very truth. But uh, we do have some uh, immediate news to talk about with you. However, we have yeah, things coming right out it. this weekend. We've got a pretty big weekend of stuff coming out. Uh, we do have a big weekend yeah. of stuff. Let's talk about the miserable failing of. Uh, of Hope Gone Solo oh, well. in the uh, Unfortunately, the it's not connecting uh, with uh, global audiences, especially in China. It's not well, doing you know, well at all. There's a major, major flaw in this film. Well, we're going to discuss Solo major in a few flaw minutes. In this film, and we will review it very shortly. Yes, for that's all coming you, soon tonight. The original Star Wars. That'll and be our third review this evening, is going Star to be Solo. Wars and Geeks out here tonight. But so. uh, regardless, it has just made about 25 mil, 29 it's million. It's still going to make its money back. It made in about the long 140 run. the previous weekend, yeah. which was pretty much right on target. Yeah. It didn't do was actually it did 125 it mm -hmm. didn't do as well as Deadpool did the opening yeah. weekend but then had like but, a 60% uh, drop something uh, oh, like that yeah. 60% are you kidding it had like a, almost a 80% drop that bad? Oh, really bad okay this weekend was only about 25 mm -hmm. mil that's pathetic okay I mean when book club is you know you're running neck and neck with book club <laughs> with the, you know with the uh, geriatric crew you know mm -hmm. it's always fun to walk into the the book club theater. I did walk into yeah. one today. And you can predict who. I saw the series of bedpans. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and you see the little the little white heads. You know, Earl and Pearl are sitting. Oh, honey, that's you up on. It the looks screen. like a box of Q-tips, right? Exactly. Yeah. It was just wonderful, and it always brings tears to my eyes oh, to well. see these. You know, that's all us, ladies and gentlemen. We sit here and we're smug and we're young and beautiful. And I, of course, I just speak for myself. Of course you do. But, you know, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, you know, that we're all heading there. We're all going to be sitting there. But um, we do have a... You know, and, uh, and you don't say it depends. Because I know. Because it doesn't. Uh -huh. Hey, hey. Yeah. Uh, uh, but this weekend, though, as we were touching on before, we had a lot of good stuff coming out. We did. We have Ocean's 8, the reboot, I guess you could say, of the franchise this time. No desire With an all-female cast. No desire. That's the new way of rebooting something, all-female yeah, cast. That's right. Ghostbusters. With Sandra yeah, Bullock sure. uh, is in this one. A pretty big cast of people as well. Could Kate be interesting. Blanchett, Sandra Blanchett, Bullock, uh, uh, Helen uh, Bottom Carter, uh, you've got Rihanna, Mandy, Mindy Kaling, Mindy Kaling, Madonna. Uh, no, Rihanna. I said. Oh, oh Rihanna. Rihanna. Yeah, in Hathaway, yeah, 
Uh, then we have also the big horror film that's getting a ton of buzz is Hereditary big. with Tony Collette. Big, that's the one I want to see the most this weekend. That you looks know, really me and, good. Me too, and you're not a horror buff. No, but I like I like the, the the ones that are supposed to be really good. Those are the ones I'll gravitate to. Yeah. If I'm hearing a lot of good things about it, I got to see it. Uh, and then well, we also have this weekend. Um, it's funny how they don't have a camera that can put both of us on the screen. Oh, there well, we go. That's called the oh, wide shot. We opened oh, up thank on you, that shot. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I thought that would be He just got out of a coffin. Forgive him. No, I didn't. Um, it's not a coffin. I know. It's a coffin. It's a coffin. Uh, and then we also had this weekend Hotel Artemis, which looks like a, like a lot of fun. Hotel Artemis. That's with, where Jodie Foster looks like she's 92. Yeah, we have Jodie Foster. She looks so bad Dave Batista. Film. We have the villain in this film. was played by Jeff Goldblum. Looks like uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks and then, like they're um, just rebooting villains from I mean, kind previous of, shows. In a way. It doesn't previous, look like anything we haven't seen before, but it looks yeah, like fun. I know. It's, you know it's, it's really a drag when you see recycled villains, especially Josh Brolin. Yeah. You know, he steps right from uh, Avengers Infinity yeah, yeah, yeah. right to Deadpool. But he's, he's uh, not really a villain in Deadpool. I don't know. He's a guy on his own mission. Deadpool's just in his way. I suppose. He's his own antihero. I know, I know. But anyway, we digress. Let's begin. just retreading the same actors, it well, seems that's what, to me. Well, they're, yeah, they're using the know, same A-listers, because that's... Very true. That's what brings in the tickets, let's allegedly. Let's go to the video tape. Let's, let's go to um, the first film Let's we start got. right away because we've got a lot to cover got tonight. got a lot to cover tonight. Uh, we're going to start with Adrift. It's currently in theaters that opened up this past weekend. Uh, it is based on a true story. Yes. It uh, takes place in 1983, about two young people that take a boat, a uh, big yacht, I guess, almost, a, uh, I guess you can call it a schooner, whatever you call yeah. it. They're taking it on a trip from uh, Caribbean Island all the way to California. And on the way, they encounter a hurricane. And it right. uh, stars Shailene Woodley, which is, uh, I would say... the guy in this movie? His name uh, is... And why do I forget it? Sam Claflin. Well, we know him from, from Their Finest. Remember Their Finest? That, f that fun British film we reviewed oh, yes, back on yes, our, yes. in our old studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was good. in that. He's apparently in all the Hunger, Hunger Game films, which I haven't really seen. He's in okay. those as well. There you go. Uh, he's, they're both very good no, in this film. No, he was film, good. I, it was, but it this was... is her film. This is Shailene Absolutely. Woodley's film. She's basically in every scene. She is. She produced the film. She had a, um, a part-time executive producer. I yeah, believe. yeah. Produced, yeah. So uh, it's, it's, it's really... Um, a harrowing story. It's again one of these survival tales that we see. I say we. I guess we get a few of these every single year. I suppose we do. Um, the perfect and storm, basically. Perfect storm. Part um, three, all uh, is lost. The one with Robert Redford. Oh, I know. And now there's a new one out with Colin Firth. Oh, there is. Colin travels around the world oh, okay. in a rowboat. Oh, all right. I haven't I seen just that saw trailer it the yet. other day on, right. on the internet. Yeah, so it's so, about these uh, people that, you know, they love being on boats and they get in these circumstances. They and meet in Tahiti. In they Tahiti, basically they fall in love. fall in love and they kind of say, let's get on a boat. He's a guy that pretty much uh, lives on this boat that he built right. and he travels the world and he goes from port to port. And he falls in love with her. They do. And they decide to go on this journey they together. They make a commitment to each other. And then suddenly they are approached yeah. by a couple who say to them, hey, before you go on your worldwide cruise, yeah. could you take our boat back to San Diego? For $10,000 and, two, 10 first and two first class tickets back. For 10000 and back. So, Good deal uh, they couldn't refuse. But let's get to the heart of the terrific. You yeah. know, the, the, this is a film about, uh, you know, I wish the film is not filmed in chronological order. We well, start yeah, with the, the opening of the film is done. Uh, we see the aftermath mm -hmm. of, the storm. of the storm. It's the first scene that we see. There is a hundred foot wave that kind of uh, uh, employs this Scary boat. Scary as hell. And, yeah. You know, the boat, it, it's kind of a cool scene in a it way. It is, yeah. Where we see the boat almost like at the beginning, not at that major hundred foot wave. Not like the one in the perfect storm, yeah. But we see the boat almost surfing along the side yeah. of a wave at one point. I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. They did a great job with the effects. They filmed they most did. of this film out to sea, I actually was reading. No, 99% of the film most was in sea. Yeah, and Whenever from 4 a.m. to like midnight every day. The storm films are always filmed in a small... Uh, well, not that small, but, but they have the like storm a, is part of in a tank. They yeah. very often go to Pinewood Studios yeah. over in, in or Mexico in has a big studio Mexico too that does where that. James Cameron did, did the Titanic, Titanic. You're right, and they will just rock the water mm -hmm. so incredibly, and then green screen all the rest. Yeah, so exactly. it's just the rest of the ocean. Uh, I I really enjoyed this movie. I really very, did too. Very much. I was I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. Uh, really, I was yeah. um, committed to these characters. I cared about these characters, um, and I really was amazed at the story. And um, I, I always think it's a my, true story. It's a true story. And the one thing about these films um, that are true stories, that especially ones that take place at sea, I always say to myself, I just could never imagine putting myself in that scenario. I would never ever want to be. On the open ocean, no, on a boat these, like dude. that. Dude, try these. Okay, let's try yours on. No, let me You want to try yours? mine on? Yeah. All right, we'll do a switch. Oh, um, oh man, I oh, can't yeah, see. Bad. I can't see. Yeah, Why these not? are, these Why are not? a little um, I got my eyes smudgy. 
they or are? smudged. Yeah. Are they smudgy? Yeah. All right. Um, there you go. But uh, well, anyway, I'm, I'm done. With, I'm done wearing these anyway. Uh, but yeah, I, I just would never want to be in that scenario. That's well, one of, of my course. personal nightmares. All right. No, but there are people that love the love the water. They do. And you notice in every one of these stories where you see these people that get through these kind of things and they survive. Yeah. You find out. Oh yeah, they never stop. They're always in the water. Or or if there's somebody that died in a plane crash or almost died in a plane crash. Yeah. Oh yeah, they still fly every day. You know. I so know. it's well, you know, the love I guess of the what odds are against it happening again. Very true, indeed. But uh, uh, it's an amazing story. It's it an amazing indeed, film. Uh, I have to say, my fault with the film is that as soon as you see the aftermath of the storm yeah. at the beginning, yeah. you now know they survived. Yeah. I didn't know that going into the theater. Mm. I would have preferred to have seen this film done in chronological order. So you don't know how it works so out. So you yeah. don't know how it works out. You don't know that they survive. I didn't read the news article about this yeah, well, particular this was 1983. woman. 1983. Uh, Who's going to remember? Yeah. Right? We're talking 30. I was five years, years old. You were 35 years you were ago. 47. I was 142. Yeah, you were. In yeah, those I figured days. you were. I had just uh, had my uh, colonos my first colonoscopy, oh, I think, in 83. Was that the one that your mother photographed and put on uh, the family wall? I think she put I that on the so. family wall. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's right next no to wonder. Yeah, exactly. That explains but, everything. Uh, does it? Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. But, um, uh, yeah, the, because we're, you know, there's another thing in horror films that they do mm -hmm. quite a bit that I don't like. Uh, just a little pet peeve. When uh, they're showing somebody going into a tunnel, mm -hmm. and the camera is at the end of the tunnel watching them come in, mm -hmm. you're now within the viewpoint of that camera watching them. The, the camera filming yeah. the, the movie, yeah. and you now know that wherever that camera is, it must be safe. In oh, other words, okay. you want to film the people, the camera behind from the people. From their perspective, walk, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, I understand you what you're saying. You want to see from their perspective, yeah. and, and I don't know why I went into that analogical mood. Uh, that 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 little that maintenance of thought process mm -hmm. that took me to that horror thing, but I I really would prefer to see this film in chronological order. I, that, that's the way it should have been done. We should have seen them get on the boat, hit the wave. The survival then is ensues, takes place. End of film. Bingo. Uh, and I you know what's funny it. is that that's usually how we see these types of films. I know. I'll be honest with you. I liked. That they the way it that up? it did this way. Okay. I like that we were getting fragments. We get, okay, here is the aftermath. Oh, now we're going back to, here's the beginning of the story. Some more aftermath, back to the beginning. So the flashbacks okay. were told in chronological order of how these two met, how the story progressed, how we got to the aftermath. I and liked that. that to course, me, that was very interesting. I just it realized kept me something. Into it. I just realized something also. What's that? That you know, uh, we're on this boat. I believe for close to forty-one days, forty-seven. Forty-one days, days I think. I think yeah. it's forty-one days. Yeah. And if they had actually not, if they did shoot it in chronological order, what would you have done during those? Those last, those 41 days. Yeah. You just sort of watch their deterioration yeah, of no yeah, sun, yeah, yeah, yeah. et cetera, and mm -hmm. the whole process that, you know, sitting on a boat waiting for someone to save you. So I, know. I guess, in, in essence, just entertainment vehicle yeah. wise, this truly was the way to do And you know, we it. never know. And this that just occurred to me. This could have just been a decision that was made in the editing room. They could have, it, the story in the script, it could have been in chronological. And they just said, you know what? Let's change this up a Dude. little bit to make it more interesting. Let's smoke some weed. Yeah, let's and smoke some we'll weed, and then we'll go edit the film. Edit the movie. Yeah, I mean and that could have been exactly what they did. I know it's very true. I mean, and that, you know, strange things have happened take place in the history and, and of the world. Are formed in the editing very room. Very true indeed. Uh, but anyway, I, I give a big recommendation, a big yes to a drip. I, like I really it enjoyed too. it. You know, Shailene, and this is a uh, this is a theater film. It is. Go indeed. see it in the theater. I totally agree. Um, and Shailene is wonderful. She's dynamite. I would man. argue that this is going to be. I hope. An, uh, another breakout film for her, like take her to the next level. Absolutely. I hope. Absolutely. Well, she's she excellent. Was in, uh, uh, Fault of Our Stars. What was that film? Yeah, Fault of Our Stars. Fault of yeah. Our Stars, where she's dying of uh, you know, cancer or something, the whatever. Thing up the nose, etc. Yeah. And, uh, and, but, and then uh, she did the Virgin films. And yeah, she's very good. Her. I can't fault her in Our Stars. No, she's very because good. Because she is a big star and no fault of hers. Mm -hmm. So. She's uh, fantastic. And she's, she's great. And Sam Claflin is very good in this, she's, too, both. She's uh, attractive. She's, she's really She's the wonderful. whole package. She's the whole and package. And she's intelligent, too. She's not just a pretty face. She's, is that she's, right? I think she exudes you intelligence. you talk to her personally? I do. I, did I, you do we uh, have a Skype meeting every week. Oh, did you? We do. Did, and you yeah. do some calculus with her, do you? I do. I do. So you know yeah. she's, pretty, I do. she's pretty smart. She, she taught me a lot of things. All right. So We're going to move on. Like, uh, we both like a drift. And, we both uh, uh, really enjoyed a drift. We recommend it highly. I would check it out. Let us move on to our next film. So the next film we're going to do is actually a series on Netflix called The Keepers. Oh, yes. This is a docu-series 
that is extremely serious. But we uh, want to mention it because it's a true story. It's a true story. There uh, she is. The, the premise of the story. It Sister takes place Kathy, in um, uh, whatever her Sister name Kathy. Is. Sister Kathy. Uh, uh, it, it, it takes place no. in uh, 1969, where uh, uh, she is a nun. Small town in Philadelphia, in uh, in Pennsylvania. No, 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 no. Baltimore. It? Oh, it's oh, in correct. Baltimore. You're right. It takes place in Baltimore. Oh, it almost looks like we're in the newspaper. That's kind of cool. It, why, so it does. Yeah. Um, so it, basically, she is a. Have you seen these two demented individuals? <laughs> Call your local who are down FBI in the corner. office. You see, but our, our, our beloved fans yeah, don't yeah. see that. They're just seeing the, the, the headline. No, no, they're seeing both. They see the whole thing. Do they? That's what goes out to them. Oh, you're kidding. They see the picture oh, and good. us in the corner. Oh, so we should do a freeze. We kind of should like this. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, so anyway, as I was saying, uh, she's a nun. She's a teacher at can't a... Ain't got none, can't get none, don't want none. Exactly. She's a teacher, actually, in a public school. She, she was is. a teacher in a Catholic academy. And then her and another teacher went out as an experiment. The Archdiocese oh, did this that experiment. To do with well, no, that's important because they were in the public school system. That was an integral part of how everything kind of transpired. Oh, transpired? Transpired. 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 I trans said transpired. No, you said transpired. No, what I did, I said trans, and then I said pired. <laughs> said I kind of put a pause. That's quite all right. Anyway. All right. Uh, so then she gets murdered. And the whole she story does. is about uh, who killed her, but the problem is that it was an unsolved mystery for a long time. And now the story picks up in within the past five, six years. With uh, their two three years ago. Yeah. Two yeah. of her former students are now adults in their 60s Correct. who are basically doing the investigation because they felt that the police never did a good job investigating this story. There they are, basically. Yeah, that's, that's them. That's not them, though. That's uh, really them. The no, that's not them. The, the woman on the left is not one of the two women. Yes, who that's was... the two of them. Oh, I do not 100%. think so. hundred percent. Yes, no, I did the incorrect. research on the photos. No, no, you've that's done Gemma research. and that's Abby. No, that's them. Well, I did the right. research on the photos. Sure that's that them. Gemma and Abby sound like two cats that they you, do, but you that's had in a previous Gemma life. and Abby. All right. Anyway, so they, them, and then also we see other people that have been involved in this investigation, a journalist, and then we see a lot of different people interviewed, former students, a couple of people that were uh, victims of sexual abuse, because that's the crux of the story. Is it that is. The, they think the reason she was murdered was because she was going to uncover some sex abuse that was going on by there this was a prominent specific... father. A specific, looks like Willem Dafoe's little brother it right there. It does, yeah. But uh, there's yeah. a specific father, father, I forgot his name. Uh, uh, I have it here. Um, father. Uh, father, leave me alone. You know, it's in no, the it's photo description. Him. Yes. Uh, it's not him. Uh, father. Uh, but he does, he is wearing, Maris? there he is. That's him. That's, That's him. the man. Yeah, with an M. I forget this, his name. Uh, father Maccus this, or Macadamia. Something like Mac something. Yeah, it's Macadamia. He's a real you know SOB. Because he's nuts. He sucks. He's a Macadamia nut. He was but, responsible, uh, they say, this for man, all this stuff. Single handedly, I, I, it's, it's, it's riveting, it's yeah. mind blowing. Disturbing you as know, hell. The thing that got me about this whole show in the first place is that beautiful woman that we showed at the very beginning. That's Father Mathis, about, and, and that's yeah. Father... Uh, the, one of, the one with the glasses, the younger one yeah, on he's the, the right, lookout. that's Magnus. Magnus, He correct. was an accomplice. He's the lookout guy. The he's other the guy, guy is really the, the door culprit. While this guy would yeah. close doors, have these poor young women yeah. who were abused, he would bring them into his office and further abuse we're them. We're talking about 16, 15-year-olds here. Horrible, 18, horrible. 18, 17, that whole age range. Sex acts that he performs on these girls. It's just outrageous. Not just, you know... How do you separate the, 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 the fathers from the altar boys? They, it's the old joke. With a crowbar. It's That's terrible. how you separate them. And he'll, he'll manipulate them by saying that, it's you know, heart this, you have to do this if you love God and God hates you. Right. And then he would belittle them afterwards. I can't believe you just did that. You're an awful person. God hates you now. He, he Total would just scumbag. manipulate through yeah. his, uh, his sexuality. He would manipulate the yeah. word of God. Into the pure evil is what it is. Pure, horrifying, unadulterated horrifying. evil. And of course, if you saw the film Spotlight, you know these these men get moved from church to church to church yeah. to church like to this. church. Uh, not to church. Find a priest. Find a priest. Robert Williams school. had a joke about that. Exactly. Yeah. There's her car. There's her car. Being and left. So there, there was this uh, whole. They say there was a police cover up. There was right. a lot of claims of different. The, the well, problem was that the, the priest and the were working with him. Well, he was friends with all these people in the department, people in politics. The, the, they were so powerful, yeah. the archdiocese so at that point. Intertwined, if you will. Intertwined. So this case it's went cold true. for decades. 
Absolutely true. But there were a lot of different false leads that are explained in this series. It's only uh, seven seven episodes, but I'm telling yeah. you, it sucks you in. No, it really does. It is really uh, a riveting documentary. Long, yeah. Uh, but, you know, the, it's, the, what it's really amazing. lured me was the woman's face. If we can show her again, Sister, Sister Kathy, Kathy. she's beautiful. In her habit there, if you have that photo, I'd love to see He it. has a habit of loving uh, well, beautiful women. let me tell women. you something. It was her. Look yeah. at the brightness of this woman's face. She she's, was a big soul. She's like a radiant saint. Almost, yeah, and she's, and all the students re revered to her, rever v revered her, revered her yeah. as a saint. In essence, they loved she was her. just so wonderful, and she mm -hmm. just wanted to help everybody. She did, and she's murdered. She's yeah. just killed in a brutal uh, way, in a too. Brutal, horrible brutal. way, and uh, along with another woman too that was murdered. It was two people. Well, I almost think that that was a cover-up murder, so that they didn't want to. Because this was a cover-up. We do find that yeah, out during no, the thing. Definitely I don't want to go into that We're not so going to give tell you the but right there's outcome. another woman who is murdered. As I well. almost think they did that as a decoy murder to distract. Could that, be. Hey, the murder of our nun here yeah. is actually a, uh, that wasn't, it was just a serial killer in the area mm -hmm. working, you know, murdering people. Yeah. As opposed to the fact that it really was a cover-up. And cover I believe this picture right now Kathy. is the... This he's is a the, relative, he's of, the relative of, of the, the other woman other that woman. was murdered. Yeah, Correct. this other lady. Yeah. But I'll tell you something. I know we sound confused and we're all jumbled up. We're just up. excited about it. It's just a great documentary. Our, 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 yeah. our, the way to explain this, the best thing you can do, please. Check it out. Go to Netflix. If you like, check out The Keepers. You if know, you like I crime it, documentary series, I, you'll I love it. I mentioned it to so many people and you, every person has said to me, I already saw it. Great. They've all, I've yeah, me too. It. Same here. It's yeah. just an amazing yeah. piece of work. It's just so well documented. Yeah. And how about your relative that's in this movie? The priest, his last name is Koob. Jerry Koob. Oh, yeah. Well, that he's is a my distant middle name, relative. You know. Well, it is booked backwards. There is a priest in this film that was a friend of Sister Kathy, yeah. and they talk about how the two of them had a really close relationship. And at one point, he was a suspect. But his name is Jerry Koob, and that's his yeah, name. Yeah, I thought that was amazing. No, no, no. Uh, this is really a heartbreaking thing. It really thing. is. It, it's a tough thing to watch. Um, it, it is it, not. It is. Uh, it is. It's a hard one away, to watch. You will walk away, however. You know, although it is inconclusive, you will walk away feeling you know exactly what happened. Yeah. Uh, people involved are, are in this whole intertwined small town. Mm -hmm. And notice how I go into sort of like almost a little mini, you know, like the like I'm the I'm the spinners, you know, like whoopie uh -huh. doo, whoopie yeah, yeah, yeah. dee. But, uh, you know, I'm telling you, it, it's heart-wrenching, it's heartbreaking. I, I cannot recommend it enough. Me too. It's so well Two done. Two huge yeses from us here. You know here. what they do a lot, though, with this? I really was kind of surprised. Every, like, few scenes, there's, like, birds. They show birds gathering somewhere. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. A lot of birds. Why the birds? What's the birds about? I mean, I, th I think maybe it's a metaphor for the, the, for the students. They're free, you know, they're little birds, oh, and stop. they're being abused. No, they're not. They're it's innocent not little creatures. For, no, not maybe. true. These are just, they, they just keep showing little birds. Well, or it could also just be filler. They'll be show I think it is filler. For, for running time, you know? I think so, too. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. I could have cut at least a couple, about an hour and a half out of this whole seven Seven episodes. Well, although the last episode, you know, I, I was kind of shocked. Kind of went into a different, a different area. Suddenly, mm. another person has been. Yeah. Well, they revealed that there was a man that was also. Well, a, don't, don't I'm spoil not saying it. I'm not saying. I'm just saying there was no a spoiler. A male that's revealed as an interview precisely. subject. There's a, there's, you know, this this thing goes all over the place. Yeah. It always seems to be. It's, it never lets you down. There's always a surprise at every corner. It's a, I, it's a great show. i got to say, it's very impressive. And while we're talking about Netflix documentaries, I'm just going to mention, again, another great one to check out if you haven't seen it, is check out Making a Murderer on Netflix. It's a, I never it, saw it. Check it out. I if you like The great. Keepers, yeah. I, I be honest with you, as much as I like The Keepers, I like Making a Murderer a little bit better. Really? It is okay. incredible. Wow. It's an amazing true crime docuseries. Highly recommend it, it. it got, just as much as I recommend this. It got major headlines it's when great. it was first shown on yeah. Netflix. It so. is a fantastic documentary yeah, as well. they're really doing an, uh, that one. Doing another pol you'll watch a, pol a corrupt police department in that one too. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just disgusting. Okay, but anyway, so yeah, but uh, this is about the Catholic Church. Uh, it is. The keepers. It is. It's, it's just heartbreaking. At the core, it's heartbreaking. Of it. what yeah. these these girls and these guys. It's disgusting. I think it's the most despicable Horrible. act a human can do. It truly, truly. Is, is. take advantage of just, a child, I'm, a young, impressionable person oh like that. God. It's it and then you do head. it with a, in the cloak of a, a, a you know, a religious that a institution. Uh, very, that was a good I know. word for I you. I like that word. It was very surprising you you went there. Oh, cloak? It's a cloak. Yeah, it's a cloak. It's a cloak. You um, see. But anyway, let's move on because we both let's love that a lot. To, to the movie of the week, Solo, the big review that has been the talking point for about a week now. Obviously, we all know what Solo is the, the origin
origin story in, in, in some capacity of, of a young Ford, Han Solo. The Harrison Ford character. Uh, in this film, it's played by Alden uh, Ehrenreich, who is an up-and-coming actor who's been in quite a few things lately. Yeah, give me a give me a pretty boy. Give me a pretty boy. That's but what they I said think in he does. Studio. I got to say this boy. for this guy. I know he beat out a lot of people to play the role. Yeah. Uh, everybody basically was auditioning for this movie. Everybody. Did any you young audition? act? No, but any young actor in Hollywood. Oh, young actor. That's why you didn't audition. Yeah, I was too yeah. old. But, um, okay. I mean, actually, yeah, I mean, they were looking at people in their 20s. I'm not in my 20s. No, you're not. Um, but he beat, it's funny, he was the first to audition, and then they just said, yeah, he was still the best one. But he kind of looks like a young Harrison uh, from certain only angles. Only in certain angles. Only in certain angles, you're right. But I, yeah. I thought the he... The very first scene he's in, yeah. he's sitting at a, at a ship. He's and driving they away, yeah, have, they, a little they, bit. His light, the way it hits him, he looks a little Which like Harrison they, Ford. And they had to in that scene, the first introduction okay. of him. But I got to say, I think he does a good job at capturing the essence of the character. I think he did a good oh, job. Um, that's I, the whole flaw of the film, my friend. You didn't like him. What, no, I thought he was fine. I thought he was okay. The brilliance of Harrison Ford it was is what's truly on display here, uh, in, in, in your memory only. Mm -hmm. Now, Harrison Ford... You really have to commend this man. He did a for, great job. Uh, the way, no, not perfect. this guy. I'm talking. I'm Harrison talking about Ford Harrison Ford. Now. Harrison Ford. He did Ford. an amazing job in that role. No, no, no. He did. You don't realize what you got till you don't have it. Mm -hmm. When you watch this guy do Harrison Ford, Harrison Ford in every single Star Wars film he was ever in was always a presence. He was a presence on screen. He had a kind of a James Bond. He had compassion. He had tongue in cheek. Mm -hmm. He had an ability to just, uh, he was, he had pathos. He had love. He had concern. And yet he could just go into the one liner mode yeah. when he needed to. But everything he said was direct forward. He said it with direct drive. This character, this guy, is given nothing. Every line he says is like, well, okay, so what are you going to do now? He just talks like a normal guy. He doesn't talk. He doesn't sound like Harrison Ford. He doesn't sound like Han Solo to me. Well, and he's a young guy. He's only, what, 25? 20-something, 20 something yeah. Something years younger. No, no, no. He should have been written so that Harrison Ford's character came through him. It never did. Well, he channeled boredom in every scene he was in. All I can think of is that, you know, they, maybe they directed him deliberately. He's a guy that's still trying to find himself. I don't care He has about a mentor that. in his film, no, 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 played no. by Woody Harrelson, who kind of teaches him Let a lot of the smuggler's you. trade. And when how you to were be... five years old, you were still the obnoxious brat you are today. That's true. Everybody, I agree. No, it's really the truth. We all are very similar to who we are. And, and I, you're not going to tell me for one moment that Harrison Ford, Han Solo, suddenly became Han Solo right after, let's say, this movie was made. Or right after this character goes through this segment of the metamorphosis to the Star Wars films where we know Harrison's character. Mm -hmm. This character is so lukewarm, so milk toast. there was nothing there. I walked out of this film, I said, okay, I saw some, I had some moments, I liked the Woody Harrelson, I liked Amelia Clark, yeah. I liked the I liked the Wookiee thing. He, he was, was great. He was the Honestly, best thing in the whole film. Chewie stole the movie. Chewie did Fact. steal the movie. Stole the and movie. if Chewie can steal the movie, he was great. that's how bad it was. This movie was forgettable. Uh, I, I disagree. I theater. really like this oh, film. God, I, I like this film better than Rogue did. One. You gave it two thumbs no, up. No, but that dude. was still done before we saw the film. That doesn't matter. She, my wife, posted that before we saw the <laughs> okay, movie. Okay, okay. No, but but Regardless. I still like the film quite a bit. Well, I you're enjoyed entitled it. to like yeah. it. I, I just thought it was a, a world, lot of fun. The rest of the world is kind of agreeing with me right now. Box office on this film, word of mouth is pathetic. Because well, I, it's a pathetic film. Nah, I'm not going to go that There's far. There's nothing we haven't seen before. Uh, the, the best thing about it, I thought, was there was a there was a great black lady who I loved that was working with uh, 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 Woody Harrelson's character. Oh yeah, that, that's Danny Newton, right? Who's now in Dynamite. Westworld. Yeah, she was. She's in, great. She's great in everything. She she's was in, in my beautiful laundrette, like. She's a fantastic years actress. Ago. She's a great actress. She works a lot. She's a young girl. Yeah. She was a, she's yeah, she's great right there actress. all the way in the left. I love her. There she is on the left. With Woody. I, yeah. I, I like their... their that whole scene where they, that was they do fantastic. the train heist, Loved that was it. awesome. Loved it. Great scene. But this movie, forgettable. I, I walked uh, out of I there. I thought just, it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. And it was ruined it was a, by him. Not his fault. It's not his fault. This movie had two different directing. It uh, no, had Ron Howard that no, came no, no, in no. to fix the a mess character. from those first two guys. No, no. The producers, the writers, the people, everybody gets together and decides what a character is going yeah, to well, be Well, this projecting. is the vision that Kathleen Kennedy, Lawrence Kasdan, they and Jay Kasdan came up with they for him. They blew it. This is how they, they wrote this character. It. There was no Harrison Ford. There was no Han Solo character present in this film. You go back and watch this again. Just the way he talks, the way he delivers his lines, nothing. I felt nothing. When Harrison Ford talks in 
pretty much any movie. I know, but nobody's going to ever be Harrison Ford. I don't care. He brought a role then to do, life that on paper was not much. Then you've got to do an impression of Harrison Ford. Well, but at I'm least sure that was part of their conversation. And it they probably the said, writing. "Don't do it. it." For me, it was the writing. The writing just wasn't there. Uh, I mean, he should have been directed to be Harrison Ford. That's who he's playing, for God's sakes. And they ruined their chance. They blew this film out the window. Goodbye. In the dumper, cash-wise, they blew it. They're now rethinking the whole Star Wars thing. Well, they should because they screwed up in a major factor. Paul Bettany was a good villain. I enjoyed he him was, in this. I like Paul. I love. I love Donald Glover as yeah, Lando. He was again, fun. He just flipped. You know, he jumps from the Marvel film. We just saw I know. him in Infinity War. I know. You know, once again, did you like? Uh, did you like? I the like little, Donald Glover as Lando. Donald Glover? I thought he was fun. I thought he was okay. I mean, um, he's not Billy D, but I thought he was no, a lot no. of fun. No, he. Played, I thought he did yeah, what he, he could okay. with the role. No, I, I thought he brought the he role. Projected that arrogance enough. Yeah, I agree. I thought he was good. He was okay. Um, you know what I could have done without in this film? I understand they always got to throw comedy with the robots, but the female robot that they had in this film, and she was doing like this, you know, robot lib, I'm here to fight for the robots. Oh, yeah, yeah. S stay back. Oh, right, I'm right, right. Yeah, I could have no, done without that. Is, yeah. I didn't care for that. Well, he's in love with her, though. Which well, I she did. says that. That's her interpretation yeah, of his relationship. No, no. I don't think he really is. Yes, he is, because when she, there's something happens toward the end, I know. and he runs over. Yeah, but doesn't mean he's not in love. Doesn't mean he could care oh, for no, her as no. a robot. No, no. I didn't think he was really in love with her. Oh, I think he was. I thought she was in love with I him, and that's that, a transference on they, her part. I think that that's what they were showing, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Later on, when there were some funny lines in that scene there when they're in the cockpit. I thought uh, it was kind of entertaining. You know, the, the, um, the movie just failed on every level for me. I, I oh, can't. That's too bad. Go Did back. you like it better than Rogue One? Because you hated that movie. Well, I hated Rogue One. I know. So this is better than that for no, you? No, I'll tell you why. Uh, this film left me feeling nothing. I felt I didn't feel hatred. I didn't feel love. I felt nothing when I watched this film. I do love little Amelia Clark. Too. She's great in this. Uh, she I liked her a lot in this. Fun. No, She's I liked fun. her very much. There, there were some nice little characterizations. As a Star Wars movie, this totally failed. But I would rather hate something, in other words, than feel nothing. I'd rather have my mother, who didn't really give a damn about me, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to admit that to you all, but it's very true. That's why I'm so messed up. But if she had hated me, I, I would have felt that, okay, she has some compassion. Hatred equals I understand compassion what you're saying. to some I understand. extent. But apathy is the worst thing you can do to anybody. Just ignore them. They don't exist. And that's precisely how I'm, I'm, this film hit me. It just, nothing. In my brain, out my brain. I, I can barely, it's so, I, in a year from now, we're all going to say, what was that about again? Or we're going to probably want to go back and watch it again. Just yeah. I want to see it again. It's to be so forgettable. You. Yeah, of course you do. You, I, I enjoy it. It just goes in one ear and out the other. So, All right, well, I recommend so I enjoyed it quite yeah. a bit. He does not recommend no, it. He didn't, didn't care, care for it. for it at all. Okay. I, I, you know, listen, if they hadn't done, if this wasn't called Solo, let's say it's called Picard. Let's say it's called... Uh, Smith. Picard, a Star or Wars Darryl. story. Yeah. I, I like the sound uh, of that. Daryl, a Star Wars story. That would be an interesting exactly. story. Exactly. It would be interesting, but then then it could have worked. But because he's playing Han Solo, because he's doing Harrison Ford, they blew it. They mm -hmm. blew it. They totally blew it. Because Harrison Ford's character is vibrant, he's passionate, he's funny, he's James Bond. He really yeah. is James Bond in all the Star Wars films. He's just amazing. He just has this ability to run around a corner with a ray gun and really have yeah. some compassion about what he's doing. Now, I know this we have some pictures of um, the other Star Wars films too. If you got, if people want to throw those on there, because we're well, all going to. No, uh, we're, we're getting gonna, to those. We're, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about those films as well. Yeah, we the, are the original trilogy and then the prequel trilogy. And we are now going. Yeah, into we're going to do a little our, bit of a. Quick, we're going to brush five. over them because we all know going these into films. Some of our sci -fi. We know these films. We're going to be doing a little bit of a sci-fi conversation here, as much as we can get through by 8:30. But you know, obviously, we all grew up. Well, I grew up on the original trilogy. Look at Harrison Those are, Ford there. Look at the intensity on the guy's face in just a photograph. I know. It's amazing. We don't see that in this stupid no. kid who's playing him in this. Okay, he, he's a good-looking guy, but they blew it. They they to Look at this. Just no, com no, 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 nothing. There's nothing there. There's no projection. Well, he of doesn't have character. the charisma that, that Harrison Ford well, has. Well, then he shouldn't have been hired, well, or he should have been rewrapped. Listen, never blame an actor 
Never blame an actor. We know this. You and I know. I know that. You cannot blame an actor for a faulty performance. There are so many people that are judging that in a movie like a Star Wars, we're I talking know. a $200 million Well, that's budget. why they fired the first directors. The this Lord, guy the, has to Chris take Miller a leak. Lord, that Someone, team. This guy has to take a leak. Someone has to go into the bathroom and monitor and make sure that he's okay, that he didn't pass a kidney stone or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, these things, every little thing is so minutely focused on. I know, on, micromanaged. I know and, what you're saying. Precisely micromanaged. And there's so many powers that be that micromanage. Directors, producers. We had two directors on this film. Ron Howard came in, uh, and they replaced the Ron directing Howard, team. I mean, all, all he had to do was, uh, you know, to direct the Star Wars film. I don't think he even had to direct the film. You're just telling, okay, Chewie, act like Chewie. Okay, uh, Amelia, act like the the heroine. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just you're just directing the characters. You're not really directing everything else. The, all the the well, art no, he direction. comes up with the shot list, and then the the, the production designer Basically. and the cinematographer yeah, but, help achieve those shots. Yeah, but these movies are almost like they're they're like they're like a machine now. They're so, you know, okay, we got the shot in the, you know, we got the full-on yeah. shot through the front window with everybody. No, I know what you're saying. He's, com the, he's in, coming on board a machine that's already in progress. It's already in progress. He just has it's to orchestrate done. it all. Exactly. Yeah. And no, there's hardly that. anything to And that, that's a big thing that they talk about with episodic television is that when, when they have all these directors to come in and right. direct, yeah. it's already a moving train. You're just conducting yeah, minuscule. You're, just you're literally train. just doing little things. So that's somebody it. left out the major fact that, that where's Harrison Ford, where's his person in this film, okay, there's there's a guy representing his physical body that yeah. means nothing. It's absolute rubbish. All right, well, we got to move on because we're film way out, nothing. way behind. Nobody talks about it. Nobody gives a damn about it. All they had to do was just do some writing and and make make that kid become Harrison Ford. That's what the film was missing. Okay. All right, enough. We uh, we know you didn't like it. All right, so let's go back to the very first Star Wars. We're just gonna run through. We're gonna this run I don't even through. Think we need we're to not, go through them film by we're film. We're not. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, love, we can just talk about the original trilogy for a couple minutes. Did you like the original? trilogy? I loved it. I grew I up on it. Too. it. I mean, those Me three too. films are my. Those films represent everything about movies that I love. There you those go. are my favorite movies of all time. Those yeah. original three films. Oh no, they are absolute. The, they are the pinnacle of my childhood. Is Star Wars, the and I think of your most well, that's guys or kids my age, that's what we love. I mean, that was huge for us. And Those three I films are perfect. I still remember in 1977, uh, sitting there watching. Yeah, I wish I could have seen Luke it. I wasn't Skywalker. born yet. Luke Skywalker. Oh, there you go. Watching yeah. Luke Skywalker. You know, have to go through this thing, which yeah. we now see on many, many computer I know, really. games, etc. And and great space it all started game, there. where he's going through that thing, okay, and he's mm -hmm. got to shoot it right into the heart of the of the big uh, the thing, Death so Star, it blows yeah. up the, the Death Star. Port. It was fantastic. It was amazing. I mean, even people in the audience were going, yeah! I know, it was an event. I mean, it was so cool. It's a space western. That's it's all great. this is, basically, you know, you've got your basic characters, mm -hmm. everyone's got a gun, and it's everyone's great. shooting everybody. you got mysticism but in there, you got romance, you got nothing, adventure, it's great. Nothing is great. Uh, any sitcom, any drama on television, it ain't great without a great cast. I agree. And this film, he was the only cast member that, uh, in, I'm talking solo now, he was the only cast member that just had nothing. Okay. It, it was like staring at a, he might have been Chase, but mm -hmm. it was like staring at a, a cardboard stand-up of himself. He had nothing to offer that film. Nothing. Thank you for going back. Look at this guy. He's a great looking guy, but nothing. There's nothing there. You see this movie, you feel nothing from him. Nothing. All okay, right. back to, and that just amplifies Noted. and how great the Star Wars films are. I because know the cast of it's characters. Great. And you know George Luke Lucas had two when he was casting this film, which took quite a while. He had two different sets of actors for the three leads. Oh, did he? And it took him not oh, surprised. Yeah, and then eventually he went for obviously this one because they okay. were more fun. Yeah. The other group he thought were better actors. All right. But this was the more fun group. You know well, who was Han Solo in the other group? Who? Take a guess. How can I take a guess? I mean Christopher Walken. Oh really? Not joking. He was uh, he was the that other made it a different thing. Would have been different. Would he yeah. have been a better actor than Harrison? I don't think so. Well, that's why he went here. He said this was more fun. He brought the role to life more. And he got that role. Harrison yeah. got that role just because he was doing the readings for the other actors. Okay. And Lucas was a little hesitant to bring on somebody that's already he's already worked with a couple times. Okay. But he, he, he yeah, said, he you was know what? American this graffiti. guy has brought this this role yeah. to life for me. Absolutely. Which worked out for great for Harrison. It was a great thing. Because I'm reading right now. Uh, the biography of George Lucas, and I'm just loving it. I've been, I've been reading it for over a month, little by little. Are you actually reading it, or are you listening to the car? No, no, audio? I'm reading it. I'm reading it. It's, it's one of the best books I've ever read. Really? He is. Okay. He is 
comparable in terms of what he did for the industry, what Steve Steve Jobs did for computers. No, no, he, he created a, a world he that did. has been no, but I'm talking about video, not just I, cinema. I, 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 I'm talking about digital filmmaking, special no, 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 effects. No, absolutely, he is that very he's that oh, version no, no, of Steve no. Jobs, and he created. I was just his, about to say yeah, he he's, has he's been amazing. Mimeograph. He I has love been him. Is Xeroxed. Everything he created here, he literally created a whole new avenue of he films. Did. It's amazing. That have come to, uh, do, would we have uh, uh, a galaxy of the Guardians of the Galaxy without Star Wars? Yeah, but Wars? it created no. every. Yeah, but no, it was, we wouldn't. It we wouldn't was have so it. fundamental in we would have pop culture entertainment since then. Look at Alec Guinness over there. He is. You know. And he had to, you know, he had to really coax him to come back George, to the sequel. Look at George Lucas yeah. there. It's, it's shocking. It's just, it's just him, great but, what he's uh, been able to accomplish. He created absolutely true. so many. Things that are just a landmark for so many. I mean, I had a I, I, I had a fucking Star Wars wedding. You were there. I was there. Uh, we weren't dressed up in costumes, but that was the theme of the whole wedding. But the, you did have the Star Wars poster with our faces with on. Your it. Faces I should have provided that for you guys tonight. You know, you should have. That would have been know, great I'd, fun. It would have been everyone great. Everyone would have loved it. And then maybe I can quick send it to the. It's I can't send no, it. No, you can't do I'll it. I'll show it next week, guys. There you go. Stay, stay tuned next week. But anyway, week. the but first three Star Wars are bro, actually which perfect. are four, five, six four, in the five, series. Six, yeah. Uh, New Hope. We love them. Uh, Empire Return and Return of the, of the Jedi. Jedi. Fantastic stuff. It's we, just great. How can you not love them? They're just the characters. We had Yabba the Hutt Jabba's there. Yabba's so we had, fun. I mean, we look at Princess Leia there and her cute little thing. And everyone always, I remember when they did parodies on Saturday Night yeah. Live, they would take like cinnamon buns cinnamon and stick buns, them to yeah. their head. Yeah, you know? she hated that, by the I way. I know she I did, know. but you know, it's just so cool. It just became a whole, yeah. a whole cultural. Boba, there he is. Cultural phenomenon. A phenomenon is, yeah. is the word. It created a whole a, lexicon a of stuff. Phenomenon. And it's just wonderful stuff. And people, it's the best. when people say to me, oh, I don't like Star Wars, well, those people are a drag. And you know, they're the ones and that are proud what? of about it too. I've never seen a Star oh, Wars no. movie. Like proud. Well, you know, Freddie Mercury did say it in, uh, you know, uh, one of his uh, uh, "Let Me Entertain You," you know, and I don't like Star Wars. Well, you well, know, then again, Freddie was so busy making right. music. That's okay, that's fine. Freddie. You don't need to like Star Wars, but uh, whatever. You don't have to like know, it, but don't I, mock it. I find that the people that do love Star Wars, there's they're like people who love music. They yeah. just love creation. They love mm -hmm. they love what. They love what what brings their imaginations to fruition and makes yeah. them dream and makes them think. And when we watch Star Wars, there's just a fantasy element yeah. there that we can all embrace. And and it, it really, I treasure those. Me those, too. I treasure films within my heart that I've seen growing These up. movies mean so much to me. They do. They mean a lot to oh, so it, many it's people. incredible stuff. I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, <laughs> so much Luke, nostalgia. You know, now he he just appeared on uh, The Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And he did the wedding for Sheldon and Amy. Oh, yeah, I heard about and that. And it yeah. was great. That's cool. And, yeah, I mean, and, and there was Amy played by, I forgot her name, uh, um, Melchon Am Amick or something. Oh, no, you mean Mar Mar Marlon Bialik? Marlon Bialik, yeah. you're right. And she was just saying, you know, there she saw, there she saw uh, him come walking in. You know, there's Luke Skywalker yeah, right in front of her. I wouldn't know what to say. Just though. amazing, but, icon uh, of my youth. Yeah, yeah, really, it's an, it's just an iconic world all within our. And know, I you say and Star sadly, Wars, and you, you yeah. know, there's a unification within people. And the sad thing is that they'll never, I don't feel, ever be able to bring what those original th three films brought to the world. We'll, we'll never be able to get that same feeling again, and that's okay. I don't think you can. It doesn't matter. I gotta tell you though, you know, Force Awakens. I, I I love that film. Force Awakens, but it's brought not that, the original. Three. It brought that feeling back to me because I love Daisy it's Ridley. So she's excellent. I thought she's she was excellent. great. I, I loved, loved her in that film. Uh, I just yeah. love that film. Yeah, I, thought, I agree. And for me, that did start. The, the ball rolling again. Yeah, and, and I love those films. And then Believe the me. Rogue One, that just sank that yeah. ship. But but that wasn't even part of that. No, world. no, that's then just. Then we did the Last Jedi, and uh, I thought yeah. the Last Jedi in the hands. You know, and I've been meaning in the hands of to watch Abrams. to give that movie a second view. I got to watch that me again. Me too. It's just a two and a half hour film. I haven't had time. I know, and it's got that whole half hour segment. That's useless the, with the casino in thing. In the casino thing, yeah, it I just know. kind of brings it all down. Yeah. And, you know, they're so impressed with the money they spent that they just want to put it up there on yeah, the screen. Yeah, I know. But unfortunately, they don't realize that they're dragging down a, a, a semi, a fairly coherent film yeah. until they put this magnificent set pieces in there to yeah. distract us. Yeah, I mean, it looked us cool, but we didn't need it. And ruin the film for I know. us. So, yeah, you know, we didn't what are you going to do?
But anyway, um, so obviously we love those three. And we uh, love the other three. We'll, we'll talk Phantom about the Menace prequels briefly. And, uh, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. I thought those films got progressively better. I agree. I remember I, I was agree. more excited to watch Episode One at that point than just about anything I've ever looked forward to Phantom in my life. Phantom Menace, you mean? Yeah, Phantom Menace, Episode One, Phantom Menace. Yeah, yeah. I was, and then the second one, of course, yeah. was... Was Attack of the Clones, Attack of the Clones followed by Revenge of the Sith Revenge in 2005. Sith. I love that film. Yeah. And that was the that movie was... where I yelled at you, hey, it's Chris from Chili. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, that was Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen playing. I thought he was Anakin. great as, as Anakin Skywalker. I, I thought as he was okay. V- he I played a little him. whiny shit pretty no, well. No, I loved him in that. I thought he was great. I didn't think he played a whiny I shit. I thought he was pretty I whiny. Think he played especially the, I think he played it really well. And I Second loved Liam Neeson that, that as, as Obi-Wan, and I loved... Uh, well, no, Obi-Wan was Ewan oh, McGregor. Obi-Wan You're thinking of Qui-Gon Jinn. There you go. In episode one. I love him in that film. There you go. Yeah, yeah. He was the best part of that film, him and Ewan for me. That. I know, um, but I just I thought that um, there you go. You know, the, the film relied a little bit too much on green screen, and it kind of hurt the acting okay. on some of the people. Because you get Natalie Portman, Natalie over there Portman. On the right there. I, um, I loved her in that. I felt in that film, in those films, that uh, some actors. When you have everything around you being green screen, that's me at home, by the way. It uh, is, yeah. Before you put on your makeup, when I take this mask off, yeah. Um, but I thought that um, Samuel Jackson had a couple moments in, in Phantom Menace that I could tell he was not believing his environment, okay. and therefore some of his dialogue came across as just like really? a, little, a little cringy. Not believing his environment. Yeah, because as an actor, when you're looking at everything actor. around you, there's nothing there but green screen. Okay. It's kind of tough when you're acting against a tennis ball. I kind of felt that some of his performance in that film, not his fault. What's next on our agenda um, here, folks? Because we're, we're, we're running yeah, out of yeah, time. Yeah, because I don't want to linger on these films. We, we know what these say. films are. Yeah, we know what they are. We when, know they're not as great as the original the trilogy. The first three was not as, the last three, yeah. rather, was not But they as did good. get better. We yeah, did have some good scenes. Yeah, I thought Revenge of the Sith was great. I liked Attack of the Clones, too. I did, too. That had a really um, awesome yeah, lightsaber they were battle. Fun. They were fun. That confrontation was great when they're fighting by the lava. Right, right. Uh, in Guatemala, I you know, know, and in Hawaii, okay, you know, whatever. You know. But I loved, uh, okay, there you go. But yeah, I, I joke, loved, uh, I Apologize. thought Hayden was great. And a lot of people say what you said. They didn't care for Hayden. Yeah. That, they, that he was a whiny little yeah, bitch. Yeah, I mean, but, I, but that uh, was, again, that's the role. That's the way he was directed to act. So precisely. Whatever. He went on to be in some other films. Well, he did a uh, film that I liked a lot called, called Shattered Glass. Oh, I remember where, that That film. was, he played a, a disgraced journalist. Oh, there you go. And he was also in a movie called Jump, which I didn't care for. That was the Doug Lyman film. Yeah, I didn't care for that film. That was ridiculous. Yeah, like people that could just transport know, themselves. Just forgettable. Immediate. Yeah, it, um, it was interesting. That was a nice concept. Not, it could have been great. It was kind of a video game concept. Kind of, yeah. You know, where you'd go through the, uh, yeah. you know, the little gateway, et cetera. And suddenly it's like a portal, yeah, Stargate game. or portal, something. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to just do a couple other the sci-fi films. Film, man, go glasses we're going to touch on uh, 1951's The Day the Earth Stood Still. There we go. And obviously, we'll, we'll have to mention the remake that came out in 2008 with Keanu Reeves. Absolutely. But right now, we're going to focus on the original. Would you like the to say original, a few words? I love the film. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite it is a movies classic. of all time. Yeah. Uh, we have Michael Rennie, yep. who is the uh, original Klaatu, mm-hmm. and he is so good. He plays, you know, I always love Michael Rennie. He mm-hmm. also did a little thing on television called uh, The Third Man, which yeah. was a takeoff of the old uh, 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 the old uh, Orson Welles film, yeah. naturally, directed by Carol Reed in like 48 or so. But I'll tell you, Michael Rennie is so good, and that's Patricia Neal Patricia right Neal, there. yeah. She won an Oscar in 1963 for a film called HUD mm-hmm. with uh, Paul Newman. She was Best Actress, and she was great in that film. But I tell you, she's wonderful here. The star of this movie for me is a little guy who kind of looks like uh, Sigmund Freud. In the film, his name is Sam Jaffe. Mm-hmm. Sam, yeah, Jaffe Sam Jaffe was in, uh, actually, he was in the original Gunga Din. He was the original trumpet player, and he's he's telling the, the British cavalry to come on in, and, mm-hmm. you know, they're shooting him, and he's going, as the bullets are plummeting him. But Sam Jaffe kind of plays the the Freud. He's like a scientist, right? The Einstein character in this. And Michael Rennie is just so brilliant in this. Of course, that's the cover of Ringo Starr's album, Good Night Vienna, right there, with that 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 famous... Uh, big robot. That's actually a big guy in there. It's like yeah. an eight foot... Not, I don't think it was eight feet. It was like seven feet high, though, the actor who played... Uh, I always thought it was him. cool how yeah. the laser beam shot out of the eyes like that. It, it was, was, was kind of neat. Uh, very good yeah. effect. His and in the remake, Gort. it was much cooler, His name too. is Gort, and of course, Gort. the famous yeah. line, you know, he's been shot by the police. Uh, the the premise of this film, let, let's be honest, it's not the greatest. No, it's it basically is a political about how statement about nuclear it's energy. A, it's a political statement nuclear about weapons. violence yeah. on on Earth and weapons, etc. Yeah. And here he is. That is uh, that is Klaatu. He has come down from another planet mm-hmm. to warn Earth that if they don't stop with their weapons, that they're going to destroy 
everything, mm -hmm. that the whole galaxy is going to have repercussions from the destruction of life on planet Earth, etc. So he comes down here and almost like a, you know, almost like a fairy tale, like I'm so peaceful and wonderful. I mean, it's kind of like a peace Nick film mm -hmm. to some extent, but at the same time, it's so mesmerizingly beautiful, so well acted, directed by Robert Wise. Yeah. In a Who did West Side Story, West Side Sound of Music. Story, Sound of Music. Yeah. I mean, the guy was just a brilliant human being. Yeah. And, uh, the Haunting, to, to, which you love. I love The Haunting. One of my favorite films of all time, it truly is. Julie Harris, The first uh, Star Trek film, too. Oh, God, I love The Haunting. But I'll tell you something. This film, for me, is... Did you watch it? You I've seen it? it. No, I saw it, yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah it was good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I also liked the remake I've with seen, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Oh, I didn't care I for that. I thought it was pretty with decent. All those bugs and everything running around. Oh, come on. Uh, I still enjoy it. Oh, I, I, I love the way they did the robot in the, scene, in the, in the remake. I did thought you? it was really cool. And I thought he was decent. I liked well, him in I that film. I do like Keanu. I like you, Keanu. You would think he would have been perfect. I liked how big the sphere was. Well, That true. was cool. He, they brought some grandeur to it. He would have been perfectly cast, but his woodenness, you know, he's a wooden actor. He, yeah. You know, he's perfect as John Wick. He was perfect in Bill and Ted. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in this film, you needed somebody who, who, who ejected brilliance mm -hmm. in every moment of his being, like Michael Rennie did in the first. For me, this film was a total flop. I, I, I did not appreciate this movie by any means. At all. Uh, the the re with with Keanu. Okay. I do like Keanu very much, though. No, I, 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 I really do too. Do. He's really come a he long did way. He a little movie uh, in uh, 2005 with Rachel Weitz. Pro, pro, what's the name of that? Uh, because Rachel Weitz? P. P? Yeah. I'm thinking. Uh, what was the premise? 2005. Remind me of the premise. It's, a, uh, it's kind of about witchcraft. Uh, it's, a, it's a creature. Uh, Keanu is always under attack, but Rachel Weitz is in the film. It's one of her first... It's like 2005. Hmm. Begins with a P. We'll look it up later and we'll tell you next week. Yeah, what the hell are you talking about? We're not on the ball right now. It's called Pro. Uh, Pro me it's, it's one word. Uh, <laughs> one word. Sounds like it's a movie. It's, are you sure it's uh, Rachel Vice? You can look it up. Because you're not positive. talking about Constantine, right? Yes. Constantine. Well, that's not oh, yeah. Oh, I love, I love Constantine. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. It doesn't begin Look, with a P. He plays I'm this sorry. guy who fights. He was fighting demons and he's dying of I'm cancer. Old, I've got to take it's the cool. Pee. Until uh, I think Tilda Swinton is in that pee. film. Okay. I don't remember Rachel Vice, but you could be right. No, Rachel. Let's in double that check. Film, absolutely. Oh, she's the woman. That's right. She's the woman who's yeah. like the. She was a victim. I mean, he's right. He's yeah. I remember her, her now. Correct. Yeah, I yeah, believe yeah, that yeah, yeah. She's being or her son or something is being attacked by this devil. Uh, this devil uh, entity which has entered somebody. Rachel Vice, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah, I, remember, I remember her now. No, yes, I, now I, I remember. I, I really enjoyed that know, film. I didn't love the film, Constantine, but it's just I liked such a it. great looking movie. It's a cool film. I have it on Blu-ray. I'm going to go home I and I know watch that's it. based on a graphic novel, I believe. But anyway, we're going to move on to a film that is a lot of fun. Earth. Okay. It, to me, it's a guilty pleasure, Starship Troopers, 1997. Oh, I love Starship Paul Troopers. Paul Verhoeven's oh, film. Oh, my God. Uh, he did one of my all-time favorite movies, is Total Recall. The only good bug. Is it's a, a dead, dead bug. bug. This movie's fun. It's a commentary on uh, indoctrination into the military. It's a commentary on um, what's the uh, propaganda. Correct. It's it's just a fun One action thing, movie that doesn't pretend to be anything else. And I want to talk about something about about this particular film. It's a I'm lot Paul of fun. Verhoeven, he kind of he kind of did a cross lateral jump in RoboCop. Yeah. Because he love always, RoboCop. True. But he always has like this Big Brother TV station back going and forth, on, yeah. back and forth at I the agree. same time, and it's the same as in Starship in this, Troopers. Exactly, yeah. He took I the idea that. again. Me yeah. too. He utilized too. that constantly, where we're always looking at the media yeah. as we're also looking at the film. It's characters. a commentary on both. But this yeah. movie is one of the best creature films yeah. you'll ever see. The bugs in this Horrifying. film are Every time I see a cave cricket, My I think God. about this movie. I'm telling you, yeah. this movie is... There's only one... Brutal bug. deaths, too. It's, I know. And they just grab yeah. you. Yeah. It's so well done. Special it's really well done. Special effects are mind-blowing It's a great-looking movie. You know, there's the creature yeah. who... At, at right the, out of Dune. Well, you know right? something? A little bit? I gotta say, this creature for me looked so damn fake. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's Patrick, Neil Patrick uh, Harris. Neil Patrick. He plays like a psychic guy. Well, yeah. no, no. He's not a psychic guy at all. He plays like the general. No, he, but he's a psychic. He's got powers in this film. He can read the minds of the creatures oh, and communicate. Okay. Uh, well, I yeah, remember yeah. he And he makes, rises through the ranks. Uh, yeah, he goes over to the creature at the yeah. end and he says, I sense fear. Yes, yes. But uh, I tell you, I, I, like a I do love this film. Uh, I, I just adore it. There's just such, just, 
But that final Not creature at the end was very fake to me, and it, and it goes and drills the guy's brain. Head, yeah, 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 yeah. Sucks the brain out it's of It's a little fake. It's so fake, but I don't it care. It was a cool, horrifying I moment. Loved it. Yeah. I loved it. It's just a little long. It's a solid two hours, it this is. film, but I still loved it. And they made a bunch uh, of director video sequels, which yeah. I didn't even bother seeing. Oh, they're seeing. just horrible. Yeah. But he's in it, uh, the, the main guy. Casper Van Dien. Casper Van Dien. Oh, yeah, he was in a bunch of. I know. Thing. I think it was at least at least the second one, yeah, right? Yeah, and there's what's her face. I love her. That's in this Dina film. Meyer. She is she's so very. Good I like her. Yeah. She was in a couple of episodes of Friends. She's been in a lot of stuff. Been a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, she's kind of I, just. Uh, she, yeah. Kind she, of her career has for a while. She was far. like a go-to for a lot of these type of movies. Well, not so much, really. I don't think she. <laughs> she was worked in that a many lot films. in the '90s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But this film is great. And then Denise Richards, I, I that was the big I breakout for her. I right before she her. did Wild Things. I know. Which was a very welcome film. I know. Um, wonderful, wonderful. One of my favorite. I just, just a guilty pleasure. It's a lot pleasure. of fun. It's a guilty so pleasure. Fun. Yeah. The, the deaths are outrageous. So I mean, yeah. just these bugs are. And it's then great. I love the scene with uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, oh, the main guy. Michael Ironside. Yes. He's great Michael too. Iron oh yeah, oh, yeah. He's there. He's got some great scenes. Oh man. Well, well. Well, there's something that occurs. Well, I know what you're talking there's about. There's always yeah. there. He is he's right great. There I love him. And, and this, Jake course, Busey on the left. That's Gary Busey's kid. It is his son. Left, right over there. Looks just like him. Yeah. Uh, but uh, amazing movie. It's a fun it's, film. It really is a kick. You can check it. If yeah, you haven't seen it, kid. check it out. It's on Amazon. Yeah, it's got Dare a the Earth that still is on Amazon as well. Sexual tension um, going yeah, on. Yeah, there's some of that. Just all the little elements, all the comic book elements that mm -hmm. just make a movie yeah. great in a very in a very tongue-in-cheek kind of way. I agree. Uh, very well done. We're going to quick move it. on uh, to a film that we've all probably seen. We're going to touch on The Matrix, oh. which again is another landmark film that changed cinema. Uh, how many Matrix Keanu, wannabes came out after Matrix? Keanu Reeves. Keanu perfectly again. Ca perfectly cast. He made a fortune on Neo. these movies, by Did the he? way. Oh, yeah. Did he? He made a lot of his fortune on The Matrix. Well, yeah. let me say this. These the movies first were film without incredible. Doubt is Especially the, the first one. Best. It's the best. I love it. I, I love agree. Uh, uh, Hugo yeah. Weaving right Hugo there. Weaver he's great. So Mr. Smith. Yeah. Mr. Anderson. Yeah, he's great. He that was the first phenomenal. time a lot of us took notice of. True. Of him, and now he's in everything. Absolutely. He's great. I'm going to say, though, uh, the first film, so brilliant. Yeah, so I know. amazing. Uh, and they lost Carrie Ann on the Moss, of course. By the third one. Carrie Ann Moss, no, yeah. The second one. See, you know, I like the second one. I like the films, second one quite oh, a bit, you? actually. Oh, man. More so than the third one, the, I'll tell you that. The fight <laughs> scenes, all we see is Keanu with, uh, you know, the clones of Mr. What's his Smith. Face? Yeah, in the air, going like this. Dun, 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 I know. For like I know. ten minutes. I at know. A time. It's kind of a, it's such a drag. I know. But how about That's that? So old, that so That awesome quick. car chase with those creepy twins with the dreadlocks. Oh, that was good. They shot no, that no, on that an, an abandoned airport, I think, uh, in Australia. The Wachowski that was an brothers. Awesome uh, scene. You know, and I'll tell you something. That was great. I, they also did Jupiter's Ascending, and they did Cloud Atlas. Cloud Atlas is their unsung masterpiece, that in my movie opinion. It's is brilliant. So brilliant. I should have threw a poster for that up here. It really is too, because please check out Cloud Atlas if you folks have not seen it. It's a brilliant. It's film. a time traveling it's great. kind of film. All I the actors so play bizarre. multiple parts. They do. It's great. Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks is Halle wonderful. Berry. But here we have uh, it's Mr. Great. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Yep. He's wonderful. You uh, know who turned down the role of Morpheus before he got on board? I think I heard. Val Kilmer. Oh, that he I, was originally going to play Morpheus. I wouldn't believe. Yeah. He was well, offered. He was a better choice. He's a great choice. He's yeah, a great I agree. choice. No, he there's yeah. and he's wonderful in uh, John Wick also. Yeah, yeah. That he made That's with right. Keanu. They're doing together they're, in they're that. working together right there. You're right. He shows up in part two, John Wick yeah, two. Yeah, he does. And he I does. believe he's back for part three. I'm sure he will be. Which because, is filming very soon. Well, he was. Uh, I've got to be filming <laughs> almost now. I'll Excuse bet me. you. Keanu's probably you know doing his gun, his gun ballet, training right now. Yeah. Uh, workouts in yeah. the in the you know in the factories that they 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 do that. But but yeah, we all love the Matrix. It's great. Uh, you know, it but created a whole world. It really did. Uh, much like Star Wars, in essence. It did. You I know, agree 100. I, I love the fact that everything is interrelated. That that you know, where do I go now? Oh, there's a doorway up ahead. They use that now on a show I watch called Arrow. Mm -hmm. I watch mm -hmm. Arrow each week. And uh, they they have that ability to tell whoever's running out in the field, so to speak, where to go, where the where the exits are, yeah. where the okay. If you go up to the third floor and go through the second door, go up the staircase, you'll be free. You know, and and the Matrix started all that. Mm -hmm. Plus the cool little DNA fragments just flying stuff. through yeah. the air. Uh, it's great. It just was such a great show. The evil was evil. The good was good. Yeah, and, and you, got, the, you had some, you had some depth to the storyline that you had to focus on. Absolutely. Think about what's going on. No. It's not just action. No. There's a story there, a deeper meaning there uh, too, and not which is only great. That, just the whole cool thing with, with 
the way, you know, okay, there's the avatar world. Yes. But then there's the world where, you know, that's almost You're plugged the first in avatar. Share. I that's know. the first avatar I know. film. Speaking of Keanu which we'll be covering in a minute. Into a, you know, he's in a, he's in a big, uh, you know, almost like a capsule. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and he's laying there and the needles are in his arms and, yep. you know, but he's out on the field running around in avatar. But it's so cool. So it's cool. great. I mean, James Cameron had to be stealing of some course, of that. Of course, yeah. And we're, yeah, uh, again, Every we video have, game in the world steals something we, We've from, all seen uh, Avatar. We got three or four more of those coming out. They're filming right now. I know. I think two or three at the yeah, same time. Now he keeps pushing the years back. I know. Well, James they had Cameron to develop. They developed. Well, in 2024, he's we'll developing see the first again one. new technology like he did for the original. I know. But so I'm curious what's going to be. There's an underwater component to the story I, I, this time. No, the whole second one is going to be underwater. underwater. That's what I'm saying. I know. Yeah. It's so cool. It's going to be cool. It's amazing. Uh, it's and again, Avatar also kind of really, again, reinvented digital filmmaking again. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel a strange invisible hook. Kind well, of we have three minutes if you oh, want to touch do? on a little bit more of Avatar. I, well, all it's, right. I mean, it's a beautiful looking film. It's a great it's a looking gorgeous movie. movie. It does look good. I, I saw it several times in the theater. The you only know, time that I've ever said, go see it in 3D, because it really worked for me for Avatar. I understand. But if it's an up conversion just to make money, get out of here. No, thank you. I walked into Best Buy yes. uh, one particular day, and this was the first time I had ever seen a, uh, it was a 240Z uh, uh, it was the uh, the, the pixel. Pixels, they, yeah. they had 1080, but this was the first time they had gone into like you know 20, 120, whatever okay. it was. I mean, they had literally begin yeah, yeah, formulating yeah. the new set of Hertz. 1080p by 1920 or whatever. I saw that first 65 inch television mm -hmm. at Best Buy showing Avatar all the time. Yeah. Why? Because Avatar is one of the few films that actually doesn't, they, it's not shown in widescreen. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I love that about James Cameron doing that with that film. Because mm -hmm. how many, you know, ladies and gentlemen, let me just say one brief thing about this. Because it pisses me off. It pisses me off how we all have widescreen TVs. televisions now, don't we? Yes, we have widescreen rectangular TVs that look precisely like a movie screen mm -hmm. when we go to the movies. However, when you buy a film, you get a Blu-ray, you get a DVD, you get a, a 4K disc, what do they do? They crop it. They have black bars on the top, black bars on the bottom. Why? I'm watching a, a rectangle. The film itself is rectangular. But still, they they want to put this black bar on the top, black bar on the bottom on what's already a rectangle. There's no need for it. There's no. It, it just urinates me beyond belief. I know that they're not utilizing the whole screen. I will say this: Justice League just came out on Blu-ray, came out on 4K DVD. I picked it up. They use the whole screen Great. the way they should. It's a rectangular screen. It's a rectangular film. Why have these black bars on the back? Avatar, James Cameron. Do I sound too crazy when I talk? No, about you're fine. This? I don't sound too nuts. Okay, because I you're thought okay. I was too crazy there. And we're but it's true, but it does piss me off because why do they do it? I know. Why do they do it? Give me the full screen. Well, you know I what it is. I went out and it paid could... two thousand dollars. No, I paid five thousand dollars for my TV. I want the I want the whole screen filled. I don't want to see. You know what it could be too? Bars. Something as stupid and ridiculous as they're still just stuck in the old routines. They are. And they should be like, oh, wait There's a second, guys. Jerk. We don't need to do this exactly. anymore. That's what it is. You got it. That's what it is. There's it's got to be. There's some jerk yeah. sitting there, and, okay, we're going to master this movie now. Yeah. It's in widescreen, so we'll put the black bars on the top and the black bars on the bottom. I know. Why? Okay. And that makes no sense. Very good. We'll see you guys Ladies next week we shall return for another full, with more fun episode of Film Banter. With more same time, same channel. More things to be pissed off about. Yes. We'll but be reviewing some new to, cinema. We'll be doing another embrace. themed flashback uh, yes. segment as well. Namaste. Theme Namaste. to be decided. Namaste. Namaste. So Namaste. We will see you guys next week. Namaste. Thanks for tuning in. Namaste. Um, Namaste. Yes. If you haven't seen all our episodes, check us out on YouTube. Yes, my Go to the Film Banter page. Yes, my children. And we uh, watch the archives week. here on Be Terrific as well. Uh, Catch up on the uh, the nine other episodes we've done here. Yes. So that's it. <laughs> All right, sir. Um, we'll see you next we week, guys. We completed our, our, our affair here. We flew through that stuff pretty well. well thank you so much. Yeah. And we shall return. Thank you so much. Good day. Yeah, Mr. Stewart,